hour. And this hour is a phenomenal hour to give God praise. You know, the hours of 6 a.m., uh, 9 a.m., the hour of noon, 3 p.m. So essentially the hours of 3 a.m., 3 p.m., 6 a.m., 6 p.m., 9 a.m., 9 p.m., the hours of 12 a.m. and 12 p.m. Those hours are holy hours, hours of prayer, hours of praise, hours of worship. Think on these things. If you go and really study that Bible, you will see that God, God operates through these hours. If you look at the crucifixion of Jesus from the time he prayed with his disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane, if you go through the Bible and you see and you study the hours in which the angels appeared before the saints of God, before the prophets of God here on this earth. Those hours were within the holy hours. So learn how to give God praise. If you find yourself getting up at 3 a.m., if you find yourself waking up at midnight and you went to bed early, those hours are holy hours. Those are hours in which God is tapping upon you. So this is why. Those hours are very, very crucial to a, having a positive day in your life. So God is good all the time and to the entire world. Let's be blessed and stay phenomenal together. So let us say a prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, our personal Lord and Savior, individually and collectively, God, by the way of the grace, mercy, and the ever-loving powers of the Holy Spirit, Father. We recognize you here, and we recognize you now, Father, at the start of our day, Father. Or if we are not located in the same place, Father, we recognize you no matter what hour it is in the day, God, because we worship you all the time, Father. We praise you without ceasing, Father. Allow us to give you honor, glory, and worship, Father, as it is in heaven, Father, because you have vessels here on this earth, Father, who adore you, Father, who yearn to do the will of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, Father, who seek out the cloven tongues of fire that the Holy Spirit has anointed us with, Father. Father, we seek to commune, to congress, and communicate with you, God, with you, Jesus, with you, Holy Spirit, that Holy Trinitarian, we seek only to be with you, Father. And after we are with you, God, we know that we will be fruitful and multiply, Father, your seed, your word, your message, Father, throughout this entire world, God. Yes, Father, we understand, Father, that there are few, that you have selected few of us, Father. But God, we know that there is synergy between us and you, Father. There is multiplicity between you, God, and us, Father. Father, give us the capacity to be able to recognize, Father, the children of the light, Father that we are that, Father, and let us commune together, Father, and then disperse, Father, into the world, Father, so that we may save souls, Father, that we may save spirits, Father, and that we are in full representation of you, God, at all times, Father, that we are falling back as human beings, as individuals, Father, that that spirit comes forth and first and shines bright, Father, through us, Father, within us, and without of us, Father. Yes, Father, we want to be illuminated, Father, by you, God, and you alone, God. Jesus said, Father, that if we do the will of you, Father, then Jesus is our brother, that we are the brother, the sister, the mother of Jesus, Father, and that is a phenomenal thing, Father, to be in relation, Father, with your son, Jesus Christ, Father. It lets us know that we are made in your image and in your likeness, Father, and that we shall go about and do what Jesus said, Father, go about and do great and magnanimous works in your name, God. We pray this prayer fully together and fully focused, Father, acknowledging Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, Father. And we recognize the Holy Spirit for the powers that are ever-loving and everlasting, God. Thank you, Father, for these and many other blessings we will continuously pray.
in the word and blood of your darling son, Jesus Christ the Nazareth. Amen, amen, amen. God is good all the time. God is so good to us. Let us use this time to give God praise. Let us use this time to recognize the blessings that God has put into our lives, that we have the opportunity to give God praise. Now, everyone does have that. But we are the ones that recognize that we have that opportunity. And today is a beautiful day to get going. It is a beautiful day to get started. No matter what it looks like outside, no matter if it's raining, no matter if it's storming, no matter what the weather looks like. It's all about what's inside of you. And you were made in the image. You were made in the likeness of God. And that is within you. And yes, you will be successful on this day. As long as you stay focused, as long as you plan strategically, and then God will be there for you. And keep in mind that strategy is just simply doing the will of God, learning how to put a smile on your face when you do not feel like smiling. That is one of the most important steps. I know you can do it. I can do it. We all can do what God says we can do. We all can can do what we put in our own mind, in our own heart to do. We are unstoppable vessels within God once we lock in on what God has for us and we lose focus and lose sight of all the distractions that the world says that we need to focus in on. If we wake up in the morning and we wake up in the morning, first thing in the morning, with our mind stayed on Jesus, focused on God, focused on the Holy Spirit, then there is nothing that can tear us asunder. I know we all go through our ups and downs and our ebbs and flows in life, and no one's situation is greater than the next person's situation. Even though someone may have a spotlight on their situation, that doesn't mean it outweighs your situation. We all are getting up and working. I have to get up and work. You have to get up and work, go to school, take care of something today. And if you do have to do that, then why not do it filled with faith? Even if it's your off day and you get to lounge around the house or wherever you are located, enjoy it and do that filled with faith. It doesn't have to be a strong, long message for someone to understand that God is within them. So I just want to let you know that God is within you and God loves you for who you are. Everything that you are doing currently in your life, whether you know it or not, it is leading you down a path of success. It might not seem like it all the time. And trust me, I know, I truly know. I've been homeless, lived on the streets in years past and all sorts of ups and downs in life. I've been married and it'll be 23 years for my wife and I next month. So I really understand what it's like to go through the ebbs and the flows of life, you know? I mean, as long as we realize that God has us, it's not about us having us. It's about knowing God has us, knowing where we are, knowing our position in life. If we know our position in life, which our position in life is in the palm of of God's hand. That's where we are. And if we remember that we are in the palm of God's hand, then we will not be confused because it does say, do this in remembrance of me. Jesus did say, do this in remembrance of me. And Jesus was not just speaking about bread and wine. No, no, Jesus was not just speaking about bread and wine when he said, do this in remembrance of me. That means everything that we do. We are in representation of God. I have a shirt on now that says, God squad, cloven tongues of fire. So now, if I am out in public and I want to act a fool, and I decide to go out and act a fool and someone sees this on my shirt, I am pretty sure they will be quick to remind me that you're wearing a shirt that says God Squad, Cloven Tongues of Fire. 
You're sure speaking with a lot of fire, but you're not representing God. We must do that even if we do not have something on physically. It doesn't have to be of material. It is of the spiritual. We are always clothed in the garment of God. We are always girded by what God has for us. It is not. It is not anything of this world that can stop us. We can do all things through Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, who has given us strength. We have the spiritual countenance and the spiritual endowment of the Holy Spirit. Yes, we do. That is a beautiful thing to realize that we have the spiritual countenance and the spiritual endowment of the Holy Spirit to know that Jesus did say that we shall go about and do greater works than what he has done. That's in chapter uh, 14 of the book of John. So to get up every day and to renew your mind and stay focused on what it is that you need to get done is a beautiful thing. Let no one distract you from that, not even your own self. Sometimes we are our own distraction. We pick up a device and we start scrolling through things and our mind carries off. And what I like to call that when we have these thoughts, it's creative thinking. And part of creative thinking is not always you, you create or you think positively. Creative thinking can be you thinking about, oh man, I'm probably gonna have to have traffic this morning. I'll probably be sitting in traffic this morning. And you have no idea, you just created that scenario in your mind that you would be sitting in traffic. That is a form of creative thinking. So if we learn how to use the creative tool, which is the human mind, God's supercomputer, our mind is God's computer. So if we use that mind, our creative toolbox, and we learn how to create positive thoughts, then we'll have a more positive day. We'll have more positive reactions in life. All we must do is learn how to renew our minds. We make the choice to renew our minds on a daily basis. No one can stop us from renewing our own mind. It is just like our index finger, our thumb. When we scroll on social media, we control what we watch. On YouTube, we scroll, we decide what we watch. And we also can decide what we think. Some people say, I can't control my thoughts. I can't. Yes, you can. You just have to keep scrolling. Take that thought and you scroll it out of your mind. You push that thought out of your mind. Let that thought be a fleeing thought. It went in your mind and it fled out of your mind because you pushed it out because it wasn't a positive thought. We all have these thoughts as human beings. You aren't the only one to think negative. Yes, I have a fully disabled son who has had multiple surgeries. Yes, he has. And I have intrepidations. I have doubts. And I am a human being. As much as I know that the phrase fear not appears in the Bible 365 times exactly, I still go through moments of fear because I am human. And then there's God within me letting me know, Travon, fear not. You were made in the image and in the likeness of me. Yes, you have a fully disabled son and he's going through situations, but he's in my hands, such as you are in my hands, and I have let you down and I will not let him down. We must realize that God won't let us down. So yes, we will go through fear and it's okay. When you go through that fear, know that fear can be an acronym. Fear stands for faith, evaluated, analyzed, refined. God is evaluating our faith, analyzing and refining our faith. So when we go through those fearful situations, say, hallelujah, God, I know you're changing me. You're making me better. You're making me stronger. You are fortifying me, God. That's all we must do. And then sometimes it also helps if we think about our rootstock. I mean, our 
rootstock here on this earth, our ancestry rootstock. Sometimes you must go back to what your own family members have been through in life. You must go through what their struggles were. You must see what your grandmother went through, your grandfather went through, your own mother, your father, what they went through. You must look at your uncles and your aunts and some of the struggles that they endured in life and how they made it. You must see what your older brother or your little brother or your little sister or your older sister is going through and how they are making it. And you can use your own family members as a catalyst for success. You can see their struggles and you can see how they made it through. It is okay to see the people that God has placed before us in our life and use them as an example. As a matter of fact, I did catch my wife off guard years ago. My wife was getting dressed and combing her hair and getting ready for work, and so was I. And, and it just hit me. It hit me. I was looking at my wife, and I said to myself, I said, I look up to her. Because at this moment in time in my life, I was going through alcoholism and I wanted to be sober. I didn't want to drink. I wanted to sober up. And I noticed how resilient my wife was. My wife didn't have any alcohol issues. I did. I'm the one that had them. And she would work with me, talk to me, get on me like a wife's supposed to get on a husband. She would do all these things for me. And it hit me. You look up to her. You see her as a role model in your life because she's doing things that you desire to do. She's not drinking every day. She doesn't even drink and she doesn't have a problem with it. You do. You need to learn from that. You can learn from your wife. This was God letting me know, Trevon, you can learn from it what your wife is doing. Learn from your mother. Learn from all your brothers. Learn from your sister. We can do these things. We need to take away the human errors within them because we make mistakes too now, don't we? We all do. So if we can see the positivity within them because they were made in the image and likeness of God, you were made in the image and likeness of God. Everybody was. So when we look each other in our eyes and we see nothing but Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, we see nothing but God when we look each other in our eyes, then we will be kind to each other. We will be nice to each other. These are the things that Martin Luther King was speaking about. These are the things that Mother Teresa was speaking about. These are the things that Jesus Christ, the Nazareth, was speaking about. We've had several leaders to give us some sort of guidance in our lives, and they don't have to be national or worldly figures. They could be within your own community where you dwell. There is somebody. I know I had many people, not just my mother, not just my father, not just my older brothers, not just my sister, but members at the church that I grew up at, members there that helped me in life. Sister Dolores Seamster, my Sunday school teacher from a young age. We have people. We just need to see them and recognize these individuals. The pastor in the church that I grew up at, in Freedom Missionary Baptist Church in Oak Cliff, Dallas, Texas, Pastor Mac T. Fleming, he helped me. Brother Alvin Hendricks, there's many people, you have an Alvin Hendricks in your life that helped you, that coached you in your life. You have a Pastor Mac T. Fleming in your life. Somebody is in your life that helped you and developed you. And currently, I do not go to church at all. I haven't been to a church on a consistent basis in over 20 years. But the fundamentals and the rootstocks that they gave me is still within me. And I probably would be going to church if I did not have a fully disabled son that needed 24 hour, seven day a week care. But I realized I am the church. I am the church that God built. I was made in the image and the likeness of God and so were you, not that building. That building was made in the image and the likeness of the designer and whoever wanted that building made. But you were made in that image and likeness. You are the church. You are where God dwells. God does not dwell in that building. God dwells within you. Yes. So if we see that God dwells within our own selves, we have to realize God dwells within the next person. 
We can't look at somebody because they have a lot of tattoos or piercings. We can't look at somebody because they wear a shaved head. We can't look at somebody because they have dreads. We can't look at somebody because they have my skin tone, your skin tone. Their eyes are your color. We can't look at them because they're my color and they look different. We can't look at somebody because they look different than us and not see God in them. How is that? We must realize we all were made in the image and likeness of God. And this is what God wants from us. I plead with you all. I'm not afraid to say I plead with you to believe in yourself, to believe that God has something special for you. There are a lot of people going around with prosperity messages saying that you're going to be successful. You're going to have this in your life. You're going to have financial breakthroughs. You're going to have all these things. I'm not going to tell you those things. What God has for you, let no one take it from you, is what I will say. I will say you can do all things through Jesus Christ the Nazarene who gives us the strength to do these things. I will say that you are the church that God built. I will say that you can move mountains. It's no need for, some, for me to sit there and give you a lot of prosperity messages about how successful you're going to be in your life when you know your life. When you know your struggles and God knows you and God knows your struggles and if you know you and God knows you, then guess what? That's all that matters. And you got to keep believing that you're going to be successful. But I'm not going to say it's going to be a breakthrough. There aren't any breakthroughs in life. Think about it. You didn't break through to be whatever age you were. You had to go through zero one month, two months, three months, and, and then equate to years. There are no breakthroughs. There are no breakthroughs in jobs. You must endure and you must go to work and you must get there in a timely fashion in order to get the raises and the promotions. There aren't breakthroughs. There are years of toil and success, but that was what calls hand in hand. So there's no need to tell you that you're gonna have a breakthrough. Jesus Christ is a perfect example of that that prosperity message is not factual because Jesus Christ had to suffer. Jesus didn't have a breakthrough. Jesus had to endure that long haul road that we all had to endure. Martin Luther King didn't just pop up out the blue. No, Martin Luther King had to endure. He had to have moments of consecration, moments of tears. He had to have long talks with his wife, long talks with his family members to figure out where he was in life. And it's the same with all of us. We must endure. If we seek to be great, we really should be seeking to be great just within God. We should not be seeking the adulation here on this earth. We should be seeking applause within heaven. And I know, I know there's a lot of people out here in this world that want to be great, that want to be successful. You're looking at one. I want to be great. I want to be successful. But the difference is, I don't want any success or greatness here on this earth. That is not the greatness or success that I desire. And what I mean by I don't want any greatness or success here on this earth, I don't need greatness that is seen with the physical eyes. I need the unseen greatness. I need that greatness you can only see with the spiritual eyes. I need the greatness that you can feel and sense, that you can smell, but you don't know what it is. That is God. That is the greatness of heaven. I would love cheers and adulation to come from heaven more than I want applause to come from here on this earth. And that's what God seeks. God seeks the one who wants the silent cheer from heaven versus the loud cheer on earth. And if we stay that way and we be that way, and we stay locked in on God and learn to give God praise and learn to keep up with the 3 a.m., 3 p.m. hour, 6 a.m., 6 p.m. hour, 9 a.m., 9 p.m. hour, noon and um, 12 a.m. hour. Those are holy hours, holy hours into which God will tap into you. When you hear people say these things, they're not saying these things just to say these things. These things are factual. You can study these things. You can see within the Bible and study, and you can see the hours in which they came. It was the midday. It was the third hour of the day. It was the ninth hour of the day. It was the 12th hour. 
study and see for yourself. You must find God for yourself because at the end of it all, at the very end of it all, it would only be you and God in transcendence. It wouldn't be no one else. Just you, just God. But in the meantime, are you using what God has given you to spread that message, to spread the word of God? Because this is truly what it comes down to. It is not just about you seeking to spread God's message to individuals who already know God. Are you willing to stick your hand down in the muck, in the dirt, in the mess? Are you willing to do a plumber's job? Are you willing to do a carpenter's job? Are you willing to do a farmer's job? Are you willing to do this hard work? Are you willing to do that data entry, that clerical work that takes a lot of due diligence? Because God is that. God is not sitting back in luxury. How these rich people on earth sit in luxury. No. God is working like you are working. God is up taking care of family members like you are because God is in you. God is working right now. God is driving with you on the way to work. God is getting ready right now. God is sweating in a gym somewhere right now. God is everywhere with us, omnipresent, omnipotent omni-science all-knowing this is our god omni encompassing all things and we know it but we must exude these things we must show these things we must learn how to be kinder than what we were the day before we must learn how to dig deeper deeper to your rootstocks again think about your ancestors think about them Think about the wrongdoings and even the ones that you may have not agreed with. Think about these things. Are you doing the same things that the person you didn't agree with it did? Are you changing? Are you deciding to be different, stronger, better? We have the capacity to do all these things. But we have to dig deep. Are we seeking the wisdom of Solomon? Are we asking God? to do greater works than what the disciples have done? Are we living to do greater works and be more honorable than what Esther was? Are we seeking just adulation, applaud, laud, money, a little bit of love here and there on this earth? No, we shouldn't be that way. Jesus already stated again in John, chapter 14 that we should go about and do greater works than what Jesus has done. Will you claim that you will do greater works than what Jesus has done? Would you claim that? I claim it. I claim that I will do greater works than what Jesus has done. Because Jesus said we should do these things. In this generation, Jesus is calling on people to say that, to be bold enough to say that I should go about and do greater works than what Jesus has done. Because this is in chapter 14 of the book of John. People need to stress on that. But we don't hear that many messages on that. And when people do speak boldly and say that God is in me and God dwells within me and I shall let God shine, people think that that individual has lost their mind. No. It has been like that since the dawn of time. So it's okay if people don't understand you because that is a person, but the spirit within them has been twisted and it is causing them to think because you are being fruitful and you are multiplying and letting people know that God is here within me. God is within you and I see God in you. I see God in your eyes. I know God's in you. Even if you don't know God's in you, I do. We have that capacity. So we've gone through the six o'clock hour. And I want to say thank you because I do have to cook for clients today. So let us wind down with a prayer because God is good all the time. Amen. He, God is good all the time. Y'all ready to pray? Let's do it. Our Father, who art in heaven, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazareth, 
our personal Lord and Savior, individually and collectively, Father, by the way of the grace, mercy, and the ever-loving powers of the Holy Spirit. God, we thank you for this day that you have made. We shall rejoice and be glad there in it. We shall renew our mind and wake up with you. Stay on our mind, Father. We shall endure this day, Father, in congression, communication, and full clarity, Father, in you. In Jesus Christ the Nazarene, in the Holy Spirit, Father. We dig deep, Father, into our rootstock, God. We dig deep, Father, into the mud, Father. And we pull out crystals, pearls, diamonds, Father. And we wash them, Father, in the living water of you, God, so they may shine, Father, and retain the value, Father, that is deeply within them, God. Let us understand, Father, that our mind is your computer, the supercomputer, where you communicate with us, Father, and in which we have the powers, Father, to change this entire world, God. Let us dwell within this world, Father, and dwell within this world, Father, living with you in us. And let us elune this world, knowing that we are the children of the light, Father. And if someone asks us, are we that light? Let us say, Father, we come from the light. We are not the light. Our light is the creator, God, the uncreated who created all and brought all things into existence, including you. Father, we thank you for these things. We thank you for the endowment of the spirit, the mind, and the body. We can pray all day and night, God. We love you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, we pray this prayer by way of grace and mercy and the ever-loving powers of the Holy Spirit, Father. Thank you. Amen, amen. God is good all the time, and we recognize God for who God is. And I just want to say thank you all for, for listening. Who is this? Sneakers in a book. Thank you. Agnes Ingram, thank you. And God bless you, too. And if you need anything, all you must do is just leave a comment on my post. Go to a post and leave a comment. I will see the comments. And if you have any prayer requests, go to a post. Go to my prayers and then my affirmations and leave a comment on my post. I will see your comments and I will pray for you specifically. And if there's any book that you would like me to go over in the Bible because I am doing uh, spiritual audiobooks from books that are in the Bible, and also I'm doing um, spiritual audio books dealing with Apocrypha. So I have the book of um, the Lost Gospel of uh, Peter in my spiritual audio book. It's not a long read. It's about a 16 minute book. But that book, The Lost Gospel According to Peter, I really suggest that people take a listen to it. The Secret Sayings of Jesus Christ. We have that audio book as well um, posted in our spiritual audio book section. Uh, we have the book of Revelation in full as well in the spiritual audio book section. Uh, we have some of the book of Psalms too as well. Uh, we also have, now this is a good one and I really suggest people take a listen to it, is the first gospel of the infancy of Jesus Christ. Because in the Bible we think we know about Jesus Christ, but think on it. If you go study the childhood of Jesus Christ in the Bible, how in depth is it? But I have the full audiobook of the infancy of Jesus Christ written by Caiaphas. Now Caiaphas didn't like Jesus. He hated Jesus. Caiaphas was part of the motivation of Jesus Christ the Nazarene being crucified. But what does that tell you? That he turned around, collected stories, and wrote the infancy of Jesus Christ. And so did Thomas, a disciple. So we should study more than the 66 books that are in the Bible. We should delve deeper into the word of God. God has so many writings that the ocean, nor the land, nor the atmosphere can contain all the writings of God. And this is so serious. The Ethiopian Bible has at least 80 books. Catholic Bible has more. Think about it. Think on these things, okay? God has a word for you. 
for you as an individual. And God wants you to find God for your own individual self. Because at the end of it all, at the very end of it all, it will only be you. It will only be God. All right? So be blessed and stay phenomenal. God is good all the time. Remember, plan strategically for your life. You must plan strategically for your life. Our life will strategically plan for you. Amen? Amen and amen. God is good.